everyone. I'd like to take this time uh, to inter introduce you to some of the strength behind the work we do at Americans for Safe Access. So I'm here to present the first award. This is ACE's Spirit Award. I think the first Spirit Award we've given. Um, I, I first met Dr. John Getman in person uh, about an hour and a half ago. Uh, but our relationship goes back a lot longer than that. Uh, Dr. Getman filed his first rescheduling petition back in 1995. Actually, before I came to work at ASA, I actually uh, worked at the tail end of the legal case that involved that rescheduling petition. Uh, and then this rescheduling petition, which is mostly the reason why we're here today, uh, Dr. Getman filed in, in 2002. And we've spoken on the phone many times uh, despite the fact we had not yet met in person. But as my parents can tell you, I don't really understand science. Uh, I, I, I'm not a scientist. Uh, I'm clearly a lawyer. And to make this case possible, it was absolutely necessary to have a scientist who could explain the science to me. And Dr. Getman knows all too well uh, how many times I have spoken with him on the phone, uh, to have him explain the science to me. Uh, he's reviewed all of the briefs in the case. Uh, he's been absolutely essential to having this case presented the way it is. And uh, remember that as I segue uh, to something that just came out uh, a couple hours ago uh, based on the oral arguments today. Uh, at four o'clock approximately, uh, the Court of Appeals issued an order uh, where they have requested additional briefing on the standing issue based on, on, on Michael Cowley. I'll, I'll quickly try to explain it, because this is about Dr. Gedman. It's not really about this order, but uh, I'm just saying I'm feeling good. But. Uh, um, uh, in an odd order, one-page order, they've requested additional briefing to really spell out the standing issue that is extremely beneficial for us. Two judges ha have given us a real shot at standing, uh, and so we really are in business in this case. And that really is pushing the ball forward from where we were, where we were before. And the reason why we're in business in this case there's been, it's certainly been a group effort, but the locus of that group effort is really one person. And that's Dr. John Getman, who's been persevering in this area for 17 years. And the reason why we're here today, it's with great honor that I'd like to present ASA's first Spirit Award to Dr. John Getman. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I just want to share a, a very short anecdote with you about where all this uh, came from. Um, back in the early 90s, we, we, we didn't have the internet. We, had, we, we got government reports that were printed, and we'd get them from the government printing office. And I was in their bookstore, perusing around with this peculiar habit I have of being interested in drug policy reports. And, and I saw this report called a biological, The Biological Basis for Substance Abuse and Addiction. And I thought, hmm, that's kind of interesting. I think I'll buy that. Now, this is actually the reason why we're here today. It's because of a, an obscure and no longer operating congressional agency called the Office of Technology Assessment. And they were really into looking at policy issues and the science behind them. And so I was reading this report, and I confess I was, I was stoned at the time. <laughs> and, and having been in, working with Normal for a couple of years and knowing about the first rescheduling issue, I'm reading this stuff and, and I'm hearing about, in the little voice in my brain, the discovery of the cannabinoid receptor system, something I think all of us have sort of gotten up to speed on. And it's like, wait a minute, 
we now know how marijuana actually produces its characteristic effects. We now have a, 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 an objective basis for explaining why it doesn't have a strong abuse potential. And I'm thinking, this stuff all has legal significance. There's an argument here we haven't had before that's really significant under the Controlled Substances Act. And so I said, you know, I've got to get this going again. I've, I've got to figure all this out, catalog all this information, and get it before a court. There's an argument here that we can make about scheduling. Well, it's taken 17 years to get that argument articulated before the court. And to do that, a lot of people in this room have been directly and indirectly helpful in making that happen. ASA has been a, a, a prime mover in helping us get to this point. And I mean us, I mean all of us, I mean all of the medical patients, everyone who's affected by this issue, whether they have a medical interest or not. And especially Joe, who I'm very grateful for, for actually making this argument that was clarified in one of those little light bulb moments uh, 17, 18 years ago. So um, with that, I'm just, I'm very honored and proud to get this reward. I'm extremely honored and proud to be associated with all of you here, uh, many old friends and colleagues and many new friends and colleagues. Um, so to, with that, I'll just say thank you. Thank you very much.